So you just got in town, you're getting into your hotel room and you wanna make some content, but you realize you forgot your lights. So let's say you wanna travel light. You only wanna carry one camera and one lens and very minimal camera gear. You don't wanna carry a 30 to 50 pound camera bag from Peter McCormick, even though those are awesome. You really just want enough to capture and document your experience or even record your talk. Well, when you come to a hotel, you're gonna get a situation like you see right now. And if you haven't already noticed the issue with the lighting, one is really warm and one is really cool. And you can see it kinda of has like that bluish hue over here by the door. It's not that the door is so much so color, it's the lighting. You notice this one has more of a home effect and it can be more warm and that depends on your white balance. But that color temperature, that's what we measure in Kelvins. So if you notice like the wider I let this image go, especially in automatic like I'm doing right now or automatic white balance, it's having to decide which one is the one I should be picking for. One of them is gonna look weird because it has to choose between the two in addition to whatever the source is that's lighting you. Now the only thing that I'm working with in this room is two lamps, there's no overhead lighting, it's dark and the shades are drawn in addition to a very little desk lamp light that I really can't control the brightness so it's either on or it's off. And if I turned off the light for the desk, then you can see how the lighting is impacted. So when you're lighting your scenario, the thing that you have to understand is learning to read the room. First thing that you wanna do is figure out where are the lighting sources in the room? Where's light coming from? Is it the window where you can use that as a really nice soft box and it will be great when you have those sheer curtains drawn, especially if you're not getting or sitting in direct sunlight, or you could use something that's more like our desk lamps over here and we can go over there and face and use those lights. Now simply by sitting closer to a lighting source with the lampshades on, I'm not gonna adjust it, especially these are just your traditional light bulbs. Sitting close to it allows for me to get much better lighting and it actually frames the shot a little bit better, but I still would probably wanna get rid of that kind of shot. And as you can see, the further I am away from that lighting source, the worse that it looks. So once I figure out which of the ideal shots it is just by simply holding my camera, walking around to different shots as you saw, and just seeing how is the camera picking up the lighting, and is it confused or whatever is going on, especially again if you're using automatic white balance. But the best thing that you wanna do is not use automatic white balance. You wanna get your handy dandy gray card. And it doesn't have to be one of these, even though this is collapsible, so it condenses down to super small. You can get the little cards that you can get on Amazon or at your local camera shop. And those are very easy to even put in a wallet or a purse. But the main thing that I wanna do, especially if I do have some kind of a white surface or something near me, is I can do like I'm doing with this lamp, which is put that lighting source close to a wall. This lamp is kind of weird, which you may get all kinds of different shapes. But I don't wanna make too much dramatic changes to to, to the room or too many. And I'll just push this up against the wall so it can at least bounce off the wall and create a much larger lighting source. But chances are if you're traveling with one camera and one lens, like right now I'm using the Sony 10 to 18 millimeter F4 lens, which means that F4, it's gonna be constant. I don't have to worry about getting this extra lighting. I can honestly go from 10 millimeters Go ahead and bring it into something closer to like 12 or 14, maybe even 16. And now you can see I'm getting rid of that blue light and it's really just giving the camera one temperature to focus on if you're using automatic white balance. Now you can manually adjust the Kelvins or you can just let it run on auto if you really trust it and think it'll do well, then you can do that. But I just recommend using the gray card so that you at least know what that number is. So remember, this is what it looks like in auto white balance. So if you're ever getting ready to record a talk and you notice that it's orange like this, this means that you're having a white balance issue. Your camera may be an automatic and maybe it's not making the best choice based on the lighting sources. So make sure that you're looking at the lighting just to see what does it look like? Is it too orange? Then at that point, all you need to do is change the white balance. So now by using the gray card, it's able to adjust and make sure that the whites look white and the colors look as they should look. So now you can see the yellow hue that those lights naturally have or what they look like in real life isn't reflected on the camera if you don't want it to be. You can always let your camera run it automatic, but you do want to make sure that it's not going too wonky and just be careful if you're in like direct sunlight or in a sunny room and it's going from up and down and all around. So you wanna make sure that you're at least reducing the amount of different light temperatures. It's okay to have it if that's what you want, but just recognize like that if I'm trying to set the white balance, I don't want it to have unnecessary colorations and stuff. So all I need to do is just bring that in let it only have to focus on this lighting source and those two lampshades are that normal tungsten or that yellowish hue. 
And then unless you want it, then at that point you can stay there or you can get a look like this that at least will get you by to make simple videos or whatever it is you're trying to do for your content, live streaming, meetings, and the like. There's one tip that unless you are really paying attention to this, this is absolutely going to screw up your footage. It doesn't matter what all the other tips was that I gave in this video. If you don't change this one thing, your whole video is virtually screwed. No, it's not virtually screwed. It's pretty much screwed because some things you just can't fix in post. And that's making sure that once you leave that environment or before you put your camera away for the evening or whatever the case is, make sure that you turn the set white balance off and put it back in automatic unless you're just going to keep resetting the white balance as you're out and about. Because otherwise you'll have the inverse effect when you go outside. That way you're not messing up your footage because if you go from a conference room to your hotel room to outside, all those temperatures are going to be different. So if you forget to change that white balance, you either have to accept that it may look weird trying to adjust that white balance in post because past a point, it's just some things look way better when you get it right in camera versus you're trying to figure it out on the back end. It just really looks weird. And one pro tip, especially when you're working in really odd scenarios or you don't have lamps that are movable and it just everything in this environment is not working for you, but you might have a light source. Remember, you have flashlights on your phone or you can open up a white screen on your phone. You have your laptop that you can have and just open it up to like a Google Doc with no text on it or something and you have that white, which you can adjust for, especially when it comes to the white balance. And if you throw a pillowcase over it, it actually will diffuse it quite well so that you can work around it. But just use the lighting that you have to the best of your ability. And when you're doing that, it honestly won't look too terrible. Again, just for quick videos that you're making as you're traveling and doing the like. But if you can record in the daytime, use that. Open the windows, use the sheer curtains to get diffusion, and that's gonna act like a big softbox light. I actually did a video where I broke down how my lighting setup is in my office. A lot of people actually asked and I was sharing how you can just use one simple lighting source, especially when you're recording in tight spaces. Make sure you check out the video coming up on the screen because I know you're gonna like it. Are you an entrepreneur struggling to get your brand noticed through video content? Look no further. The One Right Video is the ultimate guide to creating videos that will amplify your brand and grow your business. It's jam packed with practical tips and strategies to help entrepreneurs just like you succeed in video content creation. Don't let your competition get ahead. Mark your calendar for March 1st and be among the first to get your hands on a copy of the One Right Video. Go to onerightvideo.com.